Hello, good evening, uh, good morning, good whatever time of day it is. Uh, welcome to another stream. Um, it is going to be a landscape photo editing stream in Lightroom, maybe a little bit of Photoshop. I've picked out a bunch of photos from a fairly recent uh, tour of the Scottish Highlands on the North Coast 500 route. Um, ones that I haven't really shown that much before, I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, one of which was the photo that you may have just seen as a holding still, which is good because if we go and have a look at the images themselves in Lightroom, this is the raw version of that file. Let's have a quick look. That was the process version, sort of. This is the uh, straight out of camera raw. Um, so I'll dive straight in. And this this shot was taken at um, very early in the morning, just after sunrise. Um, uh, I think it was midwinter, so it was probably about 8 o'clock. In fact, probably has some information on, yeah, 8.52. But the light hadn't broken with the mountains. It was very dark, as you can see. Um, I'd intentionally wanted to use a faster shutter speed because it was so windy that I could barely stand up. I was standing on top of this cliff bit, looking out over the scene, looking out over the uh, Kailescu Bridge, which is where this is, right up in the highlands of Scotland. And uh, yeah, it was so windy that um, even on my tripod, I needed to keep my camera quite, quite steady. So I did use a faster shutter speed. However, that shutter speed is only 1 30th of a second f4 that is basically as bright as I could get um, this shot. I didn't want to go with a, uh, a wider aperture. I didn't want to boost the ISO anymore. So that is, yeah, the best I could get. And actually, if I have, a, if we have a look in, is this zoomy zoom? Why is that not zooming? There we go. No, maybe it's because I'm in library. There we go. Um, it is pin sharp. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried. Normally, if you uh, have got big issues about uh, camera movement, then you know. 200th of a second or more uh, is good. So actually, um, I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, but it is very, very dark. But it doesn't worry me because I took this on a medium format camera, the Fujifilm GFX 50S or R, whichever one came up first. Um, medium format cameras, it's a big sensor. It captures more detail. You've got much bigger dynamic range. It means that you can pull back a load of shadow detail. Like most cameras, it's easier to pull back shadow detail than it is to pull back highlights. So um, the way I tend to shoot on any camera and indeed on my phone is to make sure that you're ex underexposing a little bit so that you're not blowing out those highlights because you can probably pull back the shadow detail. Whereas if you blow out your highlights, that information tends to be gone. So there's a little landscape tip for you. No matter kind of what um, what camera you're using, that's always a good um a uh, good way of starting. But before we dive too much into Lightroom, I hope you're all okay. Um, hope you're all having as good a time as possible and you're all staying safe. Um, I'm going to try and do more streams. I want to try uh, make these weekly. Um, if you are enjoying my channel, please uh, let me know. Hit that like button. Uh, hang out in the comments and, and talk to me. I love talking to people um, in the comments on the videos. I love chat chatting to people about either what's happened in my videos or about people's own photography. Really, really been enjoying it. But these streams, I want them to be just a bit more relaxed, less about those punchy edits where I'm quickly just showing you the five tips you need. It's more about, hey, look, here's kind of how I would sit and actually edit some shots from a photo shoot. And in this case, I'm showing you exactly how. I get a nice cup of tea, a massive cup of tea, Put on something that smells good. In this case, it's a nice oil burner with some uh, various incense in. It's giving a nice aroma. Editing photos should be nice and chill and relaxing and calm and enjoyable. It's, it's, this is not um, a difficult challenge. So on that note, let's go back in to our photos. I will show you a few. They're all going to be you know, fairly rough and ready right now. Um, there's this one. Now, I've actually put in a couple, uh, a few of these because this uh, this first one it may be okay with with kind of like the crops I want to do, but I'm also going to try and see. Hang on, stop this. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually do a panorama from these two. They look a bit different. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, but um, I think clearly when I took these at the time, 
my idea was maybe to stitch these together. So we're going to see if we can do that because I kind of feel that this scene is going to look pretty good, nice and wide. But we'll come back to that. I'm going to look at this scene going down a road. I'm going to show some tips on how I would sort of change the composition of this a little bit and make it a bit more of a compelling image. Uh, same goes with this. It's a kind of a standard beach scene, but I think we can do a little bit more to turn it into something better. This is a boat. This is a boat. Uh, this is uh, friend Mark Grundy in his hero pose. He doesn't know this shot is in. Um, if he's watching the stream, then now he'll know. Um, we'll come back to editing him later on. And we've got this old building. Again, very underexposed. Uh, we can see just how much detail we can pull back. Loads. So we'll come back to that. And, uh, and then this one as well, which is not a shot I like. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do much with it. And that's why I thought I'd keep it in just in case it turns out we actually can. So let's start at the beginning then. Let's start with this shot here. And it is very, very dark, as we can see. I'm going to hide the information. So first thing we need to do is really bring up that exposure. I'm going to have to bring it up quite a lot, probably, probably basically by two whole stops to try and bring out some of that detail. I don't want to bring up too much of the shadow detail because when you do bring up the shadows as well, as you can see, the image just starts to get a little bit flat. All of this histogram detail is now kind of being pushed towards the middle. So you don't have highlights, you don't have deeper um, shadows, which means you lack contrast and you lack any kind of punch. Um, so I kind of want to leave my shadows down there a little bit bring my exposure up and I'll come back to my shadows and highlights if I need to. Same, I don't want to pull the highlights down right now because again, we're pulling down a lot of that detail in the sky and I'd like to kind of handle the sky by itself. So as I, I, said, I showed on a, another video recently, it's kind of like my tips on, uh, on Lightroom editing. Um, most of my edits in Lightroom, I tend to do with local adjustments using the graduated filter or by using uh, brushes um, and painting in light and shadow into different areas as and when I want to. It's time for a sip of tea. Lovely stuff. Oh, that's good tea. Um, uh, do reach out in the comments, by the way. There's not. Um, I never get loads of people on my streams, but I love the fact that people are, are here at all. Uh, so do please, if, um, if you want to say hello, please do so. Um, get chatting, ask any questions. Always happy to answer questions about uh, anything to do with um, my photography or maybe help you with anything that um, has been going wrong with your own photography. Anything like that. Um, straight away, there's a few things that we can see are wrong with this image. Apart from the fact that it was super dark, it was this dark, now it's much brighter. The white balance is is all over the place. This was taken right at sunrise, so um, we're very much in like blue tones everywhere, and uh, I don't think the camera has really done anything to help that. So we can warm it up quite a bit. That's another reason why with landscapes, and in really in most photography, always shoot in RAW. It gives you that control afterwards to change the colors around, to change the white balance. You get a lot more scope in editing. Um, I don't think I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I never shoot in JPEG full stop. Um, okay, so we can raise that up. Just realize this isn't doing anything because I'm trying to edit a filter right now. Absolute buffoon. Here we go. Now it's getting warmer. Cool, so we warm this scene up. I also want to add in a little bit of those orange tones. Maybe take them away. Maybe that's a bit too warm. We've lost a little bit of that sort of morning tone, but it was very blue before. Okay, we can see now we're starting to get somewhere, starting to look like a real scene. Um, let's take a couple of shortcuts. Let's go and actually have a look at some of our, um, uh, our presets, because I talk about presets a lot. The thing that I always say is that they are a great place to kind of start off. They're a great place to go through, have a look at how they might change kind of the colors in your scene, how they might um, give you like a different look to your image and a different a different vibe. Um, the thing to do is not to just a one click and then go and do something else. Like you need to kind of, it's a starting point to give you a, you know, to give you a, a, a little bit of a, of a shortcut. 
and then you need to put the rest of the work in to make the image your own. So in this case, I do like the idea of kind of just mousing over. So I quite like sort of the brownie tones that we've got going on here a little bit. But I like the blue tones of this one, even though we've just removed the blue tones. Uh, A6 half, I think, looks really nice. Ooh. But actually, A, A9. Let's go with A9. I like it. It's done some weird things, um, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to sort of slightly reduce that contrast. I am going to bring those highlights down just a touch. The other thing I'm going to do, sort of like uh, sort of like using uh, presets, but actually some of the uh, camera profiles you can get um, are really good, and I particularly like uh, there's one in the artistic thing. This is built into Lightroom, so anyone who has Lightroom will have access to these. Artistic 03. Uh, does a lot of stuff in kind of like bringing um, those sorts of warmer tones into like a deeper, richer orange. And that can work really, really nicely. You can see already that kind of how much of a difference that's made. But the great thing is about using uh, profiles rather than presets is that you've got this slider so you can dial in exactly how much you want. Because right now this is too much. It's done quite a lot to our image. So I'm going to bring it right back down to zero. And then I'm going to just dial in a little bit basically half of what it had put in by standard and I already think that looks a lot better if we go before and afterwards really starting to carve out a nicer looking shot uh we've got Nate Langs and Drums in the comments saying evening friends and Wes saying howdy howdy Wes and uh, good evening good evening Nate uh Nate would be my brother he's a drummer his channel is all about drumming you should go and look at it but not now. Don't look at it now. Look at it after my stream. Look at it eventually. Uh, Nate also runs a technology podcast called Text Message, um, which is excellent um, and particularly excellent this week because I was the guest uh, and we had a really good time. Uh, so I'm doing the crop. And again, crop is important. Don't sort of just go on with your image. Um, I talked about this at length in my in my last video that um, a really good crop can really help refine a composition. And in this case, the overall kind of angle when I'm taking this shot and the fact that I've climbed up this bit of cliff to get this view looking down on the bridge, I'm really happy with. But a good crop is going to take it further. And in particular, um, it's a very uh, kind of boxy um, aspect ratio with this camera. It's medium format. I want to try and do a more narrow 16.9 crop. This image is going to look really cinematic. And I think a 16.9 crop is the way to do this. Um, I think that already looks, to my eye, a lot better. In fact, we could even take it further and go excuse me, from 16.9, and we could go 2 by 4 more of a more actual a panorama. Um, it's not a real panorama. But yeah, I think I think that looks good. I think it looks nicer as a wider shot. In fact, before we go any further, because I did say that I've got this shot, which is one image, but then we've also got the same scene taken as two frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the settings for this, copy it all, and then let's go and apply it uh, to these and right, to the other one like that and then we're going to right click and photo merge panorama it's pretty quick um i think that's actually looking like it might work um let's see how that looks once it's done if so we'll carry on working on this because i really think that as a wide as a as a wide and thin panorama this shot is going to look great because a lot of the sort of the land down here is a bit redundant and some of the sky is all of the interest is this bridge sweeping across the water in the middle these rocks in our foreground here the mountains in the background so that is where we want to narrow our composition to and actually yeah it's done a great job with with stitching this um together as a panorama um i can have a little zoom in Mm, okay, so one one of the issues that we have evidently is that oops, uh, the shot on the left uh, has uh, blur because it was taken at a slow shutter speed. 
um, or it was particularly windy when I took that one, whereas the one on the right doesn't. So you do see halfway through the bridge, it goes sharp, 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 nice and sharp, and then all over the place. That's a shame. That is a shame because um, I think at this size, I don't think you can really tell. And what I would do crop-wise, okay, so it's done an auto crop for me. That's handy. Um, I would want to bring that in uh, a little bit. I think something like this, uh, maybe even a bit tighter on this side. Because I think as a nice wide sweeping panorama, I think that looks really cool. But I don't want to take this any further because it's, um, yeah, it's blurry. That's a shame. It is a shame, actually. Uh, so let's go back to this one. We've got kind of the same the same deal, but just less of those mountains. Oh, that is a shame. Maybe I should just keep on going anyway. What do we think? Uh, I don't think I'd be very happy with it. Um, this probably is another one. Maybe if I have a quick look back in my library, where were they? Porsche Scotland 18. It's a photo shoot with a Porsche KN. Uh, these are some of the other raw files. I was doing some sort of long exposures to try and get some light trails as they went across the bridge. And uh, as you can see, the uh, the wind uh, the wind juddering was even worse on some of these shots. Don't remember which ones I've just put in. Uh, looks like maybe yeah these ones, but yeah some of these might be a little bit better. This actually is an earlier edit. Very very dark. Um, Okay, let's ignore that. Let's just keep on keep on going with it with that first one. Uh, Epic landscapes live. That's what I've called my folder for this stream. Of course, I have. Um, evening says, uh, Pete on Pete on PC, Pete on PC, Pete Pete on PC. Um, good evening. Hello, and we've got a few more people watching. So yeah, do please dive into the comments if you want to say hello, if you want to ask about the photography, if you want to ask uh, anything, or you just want to have a moan about some other things. Um, I am going to keep on playing around. Um, I'm going to up these whites. That is, as you can see, giving a little bit more contrast boost. I'm going to um, maybe play around with the blacks and you know what? Pretty much leave those where they are. Um, I think that's kind of what I'm going to do there for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the uh, graduated filter, reset that back to zero, and I just want to bring it in over the sky because we've got quite a lot of highlights going on up here. I want to kind of tone those down, so I want to bring that exposure down, but also we've got these incredible moody storm clouds. Um, and what I want to do with that is really kind of up that contrast. I want these to look even moodier, even more cinematic. And this tool is a great way of doing that because it means you can apply contrast. You can apply things like dehaze actually can work really well and clarity because it really kind of picks out a lot of the deep, that those fine wispy details on the clouds. It makes them stand out. Um, but obviously if you applied clarity and dehaze to the whole scene, everything starts going very, very weird. So... Uh, this is um, uh, this is uh, this is where to be. Um, Katie says, "I love that shot in the comments. Thank you very much." And uh, oh, Pete, Pete on Betamax. Uh, it's better to be on Betamax. So yes, previously that was clearly Pete. Um, hi, Pete. How are you? Long time no see, old friend. I'd like to think I can see you soon once the uh, world starts to open up. And I'm putting another graduated filter in the bottom. The reason being is that I want to try and draw the eye less to the bottom of the frame. It's just kind of where the road meets the edge of the of the frame. We've got this sort of um, sparse land down here. Um, it's not that I want to Photoshop those items out of the scene, but I want to draw the eye to where it matters. Uh, the eye will naturally be drawn to the brighter parts in a scene, and so I want to make sure that that is things like the bridge, the water, the uh, amazing kind of detail we've got going on around here. So 
So that is why I like to kind of almost like letterbox my images sometimes using the um, using the graduated filters, darkening it down. Not too much. You need to be fairly subtle. You need to also make sure you're feathering your filter. If I didn't feather it, if I just kept this as like a fairly solid line and brought it down loads, it's very clear that we've sort of just dropped in this weird effect. So instead, what you need to do is grab these handles, you move them out, uh, feathers off the effect it blends more naturally with your image and i bring that back up because we don't want to do that much maybe something around there actually looks looks okay um what other thing you can do though because it is a bit dark on the grasses here so i can grab that uh change it to a brush go to the erase tool make that brush nice and big and i can just brush it away a little bit just from there so we've still got some of those details maybe a tiny bit there so we've got um, a bit of a mixture of where that um, is being applied. In fact, if you click on it, you can see exactly where it is. You can see that I just sort of painted it out a little bit here. Um, there we go. So I think that's already looking better. Let's have a look at our before. Dark, very, very blue. Now it's coming together. But still more that we that we need to do. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the HSL tab. Now, this is where a lot of my main edits um, on my photos come from. It's where um, I tend to get a little bit more creative playing around with those color channels. Um, yeah, um, and it's, it's, I think, certainly where we're going to bring this shot together. Now, most of the tones are going to be lying in the uh, yellows and the oranges. We can very clearly see that. And the blues, of course. Yes. Yeah. So, as you can see, I'm grabbing this green hue. I'm dragging it around. It's not really doing a lot. And that is kind of... It seems a bit basic. It seems a bit childish. But it's the best way of figuring out kind of what you want to do with your image is to grab this. Because I don't know exactly which bits of this are in the yellow channel or what it's going to look like once I start moving it. So you grab it, you move it down, you move it back up, and you have a look. Go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. And then you can kind of look and think, mm, okay, what is it that I want to kind of get? What is that doing to my image? Is that giving me a good look? And in this instance, I do want to bring that yellow down. I want to get more of these sort of really lovely, rich autumnal tones. I want to do the same with the orange. Not too much. If you pull it all the way down, things go pink. And I don't want pink. I don't want hot fuchsia pink in my image because uh, it wasn't hot fuchsia pink when I was uh, shooting it. I just want to bring it down a little bit because before it was um, sort of up here and things just look a little bit a little bit weak and I want rich like this. Looks good. Okay, I think that's probably everything I want to do in the hue. I don't think we've got much of anything else. I can leave my purple channel alone. Um, the blues, I might shift a little bit. The blue is if you go too far, everything goes cyan, and then suddenly your shot looks like, you know, let's go all the way, and then suddenly our shot is um, ready for Instagram um, with a with a completely cyan blue and um, pink oranges. Um, no, we don't want that. Undo, undo. But we do want to bring it down a little bit because it is currently at plus 10, and it's got this sort of purpley hue to it that I, I don't like. So I'm going to bring it down... I think around minus 10 rather than plus 10. And I think that looks a lot better. If we turn that off, turn that on, we can see that that has made quite a big difference. I think it's it's really brought that color back in line um, in the sky. We took it so far with the white balance, and but then just adjusting that hue just in the blue channel, I think makes uh, all the difference. Uh, Nate in the comments says that selective edits one of the best tools you ever taught me to use. Um, yeah, they they are the best. They are the best thing to use. I think they're certainly by using selective edits um, rather than just uh, changing my global edits, my shadows, white, you know, whites and exposure. Um, really, is the thing that for me changed my photography from. Uh, well, it, it transformed how I how I make my edits. It made the biggest difference to having like complete control over things I want to do. Instead of like worrying, oh my my sky's too bright, you've got the control to edit those independently from anything else. Um it takes more time, of course, but if you really want to 
craft a good image and it does take that time it's worth sitting down as i say cup of tea something nice burning away this is some sort of smell and um yeah just relax into your edits enjoy it anyway we're back in the hsl tab um saturation i'm going to leave just for now because i want to play with the luminance first now this will make your color channels brighter or darker and in this case i want to bring some of them up certainly the yellows and again as i just sort of pulse that up and down look at how much more detail is coming out on here it's it's actually sculpting the land you can see more of the way that the this grass is sort of undulating here because we've brought up that detail so i actually really want to ramp that yellow right up and what about the oranges i think similar here as well like look at that so much more details coming out and that isn't you know we're, we're not lifting the shadows where it lifts everything in the scene this is just about being very selective but we haven't gone into photoshop we haven't painted anything in nothing's been masked we're just playing around with the channels now we can go to our saturation and we can boost that orange quite a bit because we want that orange to really cut through it's a really bold rich color um, maybe a touch with the yellows the blues i'm actually going to slightly bring down they are at minus 35 but i think they could stand to maybe the aquas let's have a quick look what are the aquas doing i can tell you what they're doing bugger all all right blues then yeah bring them down because they are a, they were a bit too blue not low to so taking another sort of minus 10 off it so it's now at minus 47 which is you know quite a lot off and on and i think that has really taken the image a long way to where i want it to be it, it looks a lot more cinematic a lot more moody it's really kind of what i wanted from this shot and all of this that i'm turning on and off is just from the hsl panel this is that's not anything else we've done it's huge amount of editing power that you've got just in this one tool so if you haven't experimented with this tool before in your editing in Lightroom, you really should. This is available in Lightroom on the desktop app in Lightroom Classic. It's also available in Lightroom Mobile, so you can do this on your phone. And I regularly do. Um, cool. I'm going to adjust my crop because I want to bring it in a little bit this way because I, the, the bridge is slightly too much to the left. I need it to be a bit more centered, so bringing it in and that's fine because over here we haven't really got much of this mountain and this is sort of dead space in a way it's not really bringing anything to uh to the shop i think that is a better a better crop i think maybe i could do to straighten it up a little bit more yeah i think that's looking a little bit better what do we think how do we think we're going so far pretty good um yeah do give your uh do give your thoughts in the comments if you don't like it let me know um if you would do something different then let me know um the next thing i'm going to do though is some more selective edits this time i'm grabbing my adjustment brush i'm going to up the exposure but i'm going to bring i'm gonna it's feathered quite a lot and that kind of like i showed with the graduated filter just means that you're getting a soft brush it blends with everything that's around it rather than just applying it with a very like hard edge um, but i'm bringing the flow down that basically means that with each stroke if you consider this a percentage of 100 with each stroke of my brush uh, that's only going to apply five percent of the effect which means that as you brush each time you bring in more of the effect until you get to 100 which is great because it means that that is how um stop playing periphery go away um that is how you build up the effect that's how you can make it look really really natural whereas if you sort of went in at 100 percent uh then you know you see all of it it's very difficult to kind of finesse um how you're using uh how you're using that tool so uh, let's undo that so yeah we bring our flow down but i do want to paint over here we're just sort of you know big brush i'm trying to bring up some of the detail around here because it's falling a bit too much to shadow but as we saw if we just bring up the shadow on everything 
then the image starts to look a little bit weird. But I'm going to bring that exposure up a bit more. I can also bring up the shadows on here. It's only bringing it up on the brush. I'm going to. Um, I'm using the mouse wheel just to make my brush bigger and smaller. Using a smaller one now, I'm going to just start brushing it in on here and on here, a little bit under the bridge and a little bit down here. I don't want any of the details falling to absolute black. I want to make sure that there is still some information being kept in those shadows. Uh, Pete in the comments asks a very good question. Does the order of doing these edits have an impact? Um, no, not not on a technical level. Like they, you know, if you if you could take these all the edits I've done and rearrange them, you would still get the same image. But it's just an easier. It's it's more about kind of how you do your process. Um, I start off with just sort of bringing up the exposure if I needed to because this image was so dark. Things like white balance are necessary, like global edits. And once you've kind of got your image to a good starting point, which um, was something like this, uh, just by just by changing our exposure and our white balance, that's when I start doing the more fine-tuned edits, the ones that would, the ones I would consider the more creative edits, which is things like. Uh, using the HSL tab and um, painting in light in certain areas. You you can do it, but if I started off by using the brush tool on this very, very dark raw file, I wouldn't know where I'm brushing or what I'm doing. Yes, you still get the same image eventually, but it's not as easy to work with. So it's just about kind of, you know, building it up. I, I like to give myself a good uh, a good starting point and then I get creative. And that's kind of what I've done uh, in this shot here. Uh, Mark Grundy is in the comments. Where was I when you took this shot? About two foot out of frame. Uh, yeah, you may have been. You were either up, you may have been up here with me. The, you were also in the car at one point because we have also got some shots of you uh, with the car on the road at some point. Let's have a quick... A uh, quick look. Uh, there we go. Um, you were in that car because you were the one driving it in case another uh, another car came. Not that anyone did, but uh, so you may have you may have been there. Um, we moved around. We're here for a, we're here for a little bit of time actually. It was really good. And then the um, the light got great later on. Uh, where is the sunrise ones gone? Do we come back here? Oh, here we go. Yeah, we got an epic sunrise. Epic sunrise. This actually was the second day. Look at that. You can't ask for better colors than that. Yeah, it's pretty good as far as the car shoot goes. Um, epic landscapes. There we go. So now we're back on this one. Uh, back into our develop module. Okay. Um, so where are we going at the moment? Um I think we could maybe start to sort of raise the black levels a little bit. Not too much because it starts to get that sort of faded look. And while I do kind of like that, there are better ways of, of achieving it. And um, and I don't want uh, all of those uh, uh, sort of darker tones to be completely um, washed out. But I think we're on to a good thing so far. Right, getting another brush. Exposure up a little bit. But I'm also going to increase the whites. I'm also going to increase the clarity. And in this one, I'm going to start painting it over the mountains. I'm also going to increase that flow a little bit just so I can paint it in a bit quicker. Because I want to try and bring out a little bit more detail on those mountains behind. And if I just turn that one off and on, it's only a small amount, but look how much of a difference that's making on um, all these rocks. They're sort of being carved out a lot more. If I just um, zoom in up here and we turn that on and off I mean it starts to look a little bit maybe that's um, uh, zoom back you see what I mean it looks good a little bit more detail coming through so I'm going to kind of do that not too much on this side a little bit there and a little bit over this side uh, maybe I might also sort of use it to bring out some of the detail around the water's edge a little bit on here Really, it's just about kind of painting it in. 
But it's easy because if you don't like a bit that you've painted in, you just undo it or paint it back out. Because if we have a look at where I've just painted, that's pretty much it. So it's very easy to just get the erase tool and go and get rid of those bits if you don't like them. So uh, it is a very uh, it is a convenient way of working. Let's hide that mask again. Paint a little bit more. And once you've painted in your mask, you can still then edit how much of the effect you want to apply. So, you know, I can keep moving this whites up and down a little bit. See what it looks like with a little bit more clarity or a little bit less, actually. Um, can maybe boost the highlights. That's not really doing a lot. What about the shadows? Maybe just a bit of exposure. Oh, no, 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 no. At least nothing like that much. Just a little bit, a little hint. Looks a lot better. So there's a before and after. I still don't think my crop's quite right. Like that. That's better. Yeah. Cool. Um, there's not loads more that I think I would really want to do with this in Lightroom. One thing I actually would like to try. Another brush. Reset the effect. Shadows down. Contrast up and um, I'm going to bring that flow the flow's fine but I want to paint in I want to try and emphasize this shadow because I love that it's a reflection this this shadow if it's either a shadow or a reflection of the bridge this V shape that we've got I think that looks really really nice so I just want to emphasize that a little bit more in the water so maybe bringing those shadows down a bit more I just think that looks really cool I like it I do like that. Yeah. Um, if I was going to be spending a lot more time, and I remember when I did this originally, this was going to be a uh, big double page spread in the CNET magazine. I did a lot of like very specific dodging and burning. I went in and I did, um, I, I brightened like the rocks more. I also went in and masked out the bridge. I brought up some of the um, the whites uh, on the bridge. I also think I brought down the saturation. Um, all of which is probably a little bit too much just for now. But I will just show if I wanted to mask out the bridge, I would click auto mask. Now, auto mask can be really, really helpful. I'm going to click show selected mask overlay so it goes pink. I've reset all the effects to nothing. But now we are literally just going to go around and paint in on our bridge. And hopefully because we've got auto mask selected, it shouldn't paint too much on any of the uh, land around the bridge. It should recognize where we're painting. Something like this. And it looks like it sort of has. It's in a little bit up here, but we can neaten that up, get the erase tool, make it much smaller. And just get rid of that. The thing I want to try here, nope, this guy I certainly got rid of it, haven't I? Let's go back on it. Turn off this. I want to do two things. One, ever so slightly boost the exposure, ever so slightly boost the shadows, and I want to just try bringing down the saturation, because right now it's quite orange. But a, this bridge shouldn't be orange, it should be grey. There's a lot of tones in it that kind of shouldn't be there. So I want to see what it looks like bringing it down, and bringing it down to zero is too much particularly when I haven't done a proper mask I've just sort of crudely painted it in but I think somewhere around minus 20 ish looks okay I can always sort of go back in and, and try and neaten up this mask even more and again if we click show mask if there's any bits where it's quite obviously not worked where I need to put in a little bit more effort I can go back in smaller brush go around and just polish it up so that might look a little bit better now and check that and you can tell if you've got it because if you ramp it up and then down you'll see kind of how it's changing that effect um yeah i think bringing it down just sort of takes those oranges out and it makes it stand out a little bit more as a concrete man-made structure which in a way you'd think oh well, you don't want to because you know it, it looks too alien but that's kind of the point of this bridge it is this modern structure 
in amongst this beautiful natural scene. So um, I kind of want to make sure that it has got those cold, harsh, um, sort of lifeless tones or lack of tones rather, um, so that it does stand out more from its background. Uh, so yeah, I think that's um, I think that's looking pretty good. What do you think? Um, if I was doing anything else, I would maybe do a little bit more uh, selective brightening in some areas, bring that flow back down, maybe a little bit on these rocks up here, maybe even a little bit on the arms of the bridge, a little bit on the rocks, on this edge, um, a tiny bit. You can double up if you've already painted in one mask, you can paint over it with a different one. But um, and a tiny bit maybe on some of these details. Something like this. But I would say that in Lightroom, that is, that is as far as I would want to take this image. If I did anything more, I might take it over into Photoshop. I might experiment with maybe layering up different uh, different styles and, and color tones. Um, I like doing that in Photoshop because you can work in layers. And so you can literally apply different, you know, your standard presets that you, you may have bought a pack of presets, but rather than just applying one, you can apply multiple ones in layers and bring the opacity down so you're getting a blend of those color tones allowing you to create something that is truly unique. Um, but I don't really think I want to in this shot. I kind of like where we've taken it to. And the last thing I will try is just a bit of color grading. I'll try adding some colder tones back into those shadows, I think. Not loads, just a little bit, 7% of the saturation. In fact, if we have a look at our midtones. Uh, here, we can see um, I actually don't really want to do anything with the midtones, I don't think. Let's go over to our highlights, add in a little bit of warmth maybe into those highlights. See what that looks. Again, what is, what's kind of nice to do is be able to put in quite a lot, then move it around. Then you can kind of get a proper idea of sort of the look that you want to go. Maybe a slightly more yellowy orange I think looks really nice, but a lot less of it. It's just a touch, it's a very small hint. Something around there. What about our shadows again? Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, a little bit less. Something around there. Saturation of 10. And we can turn off that effect. And back on. It's very subtle. I don't even know if you'll be able to tell on the stream because of YouTube's compression. Let me know if you can. But I think it's nice. I think it's added a little bit of warmth in the sky, which is... Um, just helped toning down some of that intense blue. It's also added a little bit of that coolness to the shadows, which I think emphasizes that feeling of it being like an early morning cold thing. This was taken in midwinter, yeah, 18th of December in the Highlands of Scotland. It was bloody cold, really cold. Um, I'm surprised there was no snow around. It was about minus four, minus five, and... Um, yeah, it was it was a tough shoot, but really good fun. As, in fact, Mark, who was on the trip with me, says in the comments, it was an awesome trip. And he was right, it was an awesome trip. Okay, this is our before. It was a dark image. It was, the colour tones were all off. This is what I have done to this shot. I'm really happy. I'm now really happy. Now I've added in a little bit more contrast because I brought it back. And I think it can stand to have a little bit more pop. That looks good. And most of that has been done with selective tools and with our hue saturation luminance tool. So there we go. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, shame we couldn't get these ones uh, to work out properly because I do like what we've done here. Maybe we could even just um, uh, have copy those effects over and paste them in on this one. Sort of works. It hasn't done the selective um, selective ones, but you, know, you kind of get the idea. Yeah, um, it does work as a, as a big wide panorama. Um, there definitely is one that I've done that did work. But let's move on to another shot. Mark, if you're still in, in the comments, did you see that I've lined up this shot of you to do later? We're going to enjoy that. 
Um, but this is next. After I've had some more tea, which is getting very cold now. Because I can't just sit on a live stream drinking tea. I need to actually do something. So this is a shot, as you can see, looking down a road at a mountain. You didn't need me to tell you that, presumably. Um, but it is a shot that, at the time, the conditions looked really good. I remember we were driving down this road, and I kind of had a look at this scene. It's like, wow, I've got to get out and take a photo. But because we were literally just sort of just driving on the road, um, the only composition I could really think of getting was this view down the road. This you know, this road going away into the distance towards the mountains, which you know does look kind of epic. But I do think it's one that can be refined a lot by a much better crop because i just think it's not a very compelling composition overall i don't think it does a lot for me so certainly i want to try 169 with this shot i want to bring it up something like this um so what i'm paying attention to is that i want the mountain obviously to be kind of towards the right third I don't want to bring it any further over to be exactly on this third line because then it's moving the road itself a little bit too far over to the right. So I'm kind of happy for it to fall not exactly on it. Um, but I also don't want to cut off any of this cloud because although, yes, we're cutting off this cloud, this one sort of stands on its own, almost like it's, it is it is part of the subject. So I don't want to accidentally chop a bit of it off instead it's there and it looks like a much more intentional composition as a result i think as a wider scene with this road sweeping away does look um a lot better um i could even try it there's an even narrower one which i also really like i might like that even more because it's also not cutting off one of these lines. We've got a nice even uh, even slice between the uh, the road lines. But are we losing some of that nice foreground interest? Maybe we are. Let's go back to 16.9. This is the thing. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It is very much about what you kind of like, what you're going for. Okay, I take it back. There are plenty of wrong ways to do it, but, you know... Uh, Okay, let's stick with um, 169. I think that's okay. And um, I don't think this image really is going to need a lot. I am going to um, take some shortcuts again. And we're going to have a little look through um, some of our styles just to get us going. really like how A3 looks. Let's just apply that for now. Keep on going. I really like A4. really like A5. really like A6. A little bit too contrasty, but I do like what it's done on the... Um, stuff here let's leave it with this or four what do we think a3 or a4 a3 that's what we're going with but we're going to make some other changes so let's not worry about it um this is another good example of using a um graduated filter because i just want to, I'm going to reset it all I'm going to bring in my filter down here and I just want to take the edge off those highlights a little bit. Not loads, not all the way down. It gets too contrasty straight away, but just a touch. And I'm going to experiment with a little bit of clarity. Now, I do like that we've kind of got this soft look to this scene, but with these wispy clouds, you've, if you add a bit of clarity, just emphasize that texture, they look almost more wispy because of that added texture see what i mean like we bring that up if you go too far it adds in a lot of contrast and I, I, again i don't really want to do that right now but i could maybe try just bringing this um the whole thing down so it blends a little bit more easily yeah i think that looks pretty good i like that um okay let's go into our uh, actual exposure panel though let's see about these shadows i think i can stand to lift the shadows a little bit maybe bring the highlights down a touch but we don't need to do loads because we did the sky with the filter already so just a little bit on those highlights um and next up we're going into our hsl tab again 
start off with our hue and um, I think I want to kind of drop these yellows down um, a little bit because I love we've got a lot of yellow coming in from these uh, this sort of sunset coming across here and I want that to have a, a richer tone right now it's very yellow but I think taking it more into the orange side just looks just looks great um, but not so much with the actual orange slider because once we start going further down everything gets very pink and um, instead like I want true oranges as it were but my yellows to be a little bit more orange and I think that's kind of as far as I want to go um, with that uh, the blue kind of looks fine um, it's been dropped by the preset to sort of minus eight um, and I think that's okay I might actually reset it. I minus do minus two, minus three. Problem is, if you start to go even at, even at minus eight where it was and around here at minus ten, it goes very very cyan very quickly. And I don't really love a a very cyan sky. So I think somewhere around minus five is all it needs. But I will bring down the luminance because I think if we bring that blue down, and I'm right. As soon as we bring it down, look at how much separation we suddenly get from the sky and that cloud which i think looks real good somewhere around minus 30 which is kind of a lot but it's a very rich blue so i'm also going to bring down the saturation a little bit more so we get the best of both worlds we get that that deeper tone that gives us that separation between sky and cloud but we don't get a very overwhelming blue um you know if our blue was really high and that's kind of the dominant color that's all you see your eye is no longer drawn to these really nice shafts of light it's not drawn to the mountain your your eye doesn't lead the way down the road instead you're just seeing this vivid blue sky so we want to take that down have it blend nicely with the scene. So I think that's looking looking pretty nice. Um, I might lift those oranges again, bringing out that real um, nice sort of end of day warmth. I don't even know what time it was. What time was it? Ten past ten. It wasn't end of day at all. It was the morning still. So morning still sunrise basically this is you know in the highlands of scotland right in the northern tip this was very much pretty much as far north as you can go so um yeah this is this is sunrise we're seeing actually so that's what we've that's what we've achieved with our hsl and um i like as well that we've kind of gone from like these this greeny yellow and a slightly purpley blue we've shifted those hues to have a real nice blend of, of of true orange and true deep blue here, which I think looks great. Um, I'm going to bring in a um, another graduated filter, darken it down slightly, again just to slightly add a bit of shadow in the uh, right in the in the in the extreme foreground here. In fact, I'm going to feather it off even more by dragging it up and then pulling back on the effect because I want it to be subtle I don't want it to look properly letterboxed again it's just about trying to draw the eye towards the 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 subject in the picture which really is this this area here the road is leading towards it in an ideal world this bit of the road wouldn't be in shadow we'd have lovely light going all the way through that's sort of drawing your eye down that road um, towards the mountain we don't have that and that's okay. We can try and um, what I might do is is use a, a radial filter. It's basically a circle. We can try bringing that in and maybe brightening it up slightly, like this. Also warming it up because this is a very blue bit of road against orange kind of everywhere else. Particularly here, because it's catching the light. This part is orange. This bit's in shadow so it's blue because it doesn't have that that warm sun hitting it so if we warm it up a little bit more like there then it's going to make it fit a little bit more with the rest of the road might have gone a little bit too far but you get the idea the road is now a bit more obvious the whole way through the scene and we can increase that 
a bit more what i might do is this painting a mask rough and ready at this point just like this because i want to bring out some of the some of the like the those little highlights and those little details on it i'm going to do that first of all by increasing the whites maybe even a bit of clarity because the clarity is going to bring out those tiny details clarity is just mid-tone contrast so this is just increasing that contrast and as i pulse it up and down you can see what it's doing these like reflectiony bits these brighter bits are getting brighter so i actually think clarity works really well on this road surface but i wouldn't have wanted to apply clarity to everything it would have looked horrendous so again we've brushed it in and as a result i think we're getting somewhere now there is something that I want to address, and it's this big old um, flare. We've got like a, a lens flare going on. I actually don't mind it at all. There are a lot of people and a lot of photographers that would that would be like, "No, that has ruined the shot." You know, you, you need. I didn't even have a lens hood on when I took this, um, and it would insist that I I Photoshop it out which I, I could do, and it would probably take a little while because it's quite a big area, and I'm not even sure I could do a very convincing job. But I actually like it. I, I like having a bit of flare. I'd, I'd prefer it if there was more flare down here because sometimes you'll often get a uh, lens flare that goes the whole way across the picture, so you get a blob here and then a, a greeny blob down here. We don't have that. We just have this one. But it, it to me, it, it, it seems really authentic because it is a sun uh, sunrise poking over the mountains we're clearly shooting into that sunlight so you would expect a bit of flaring you'd expect something like that so to me that really isn't an issue i like it um i have absolutely no problem please let me know what you think of this bit of lens flare see whether you think it would be worth worth taking out or not um because we could Let's actually see how well Photoshop can do it automatically, just for the sake of argument. Katie says, I quite like a lens flare. It gives character to the scene. That's exactly the point. It does give character. While it's loading, I can have a big gulp of tea. Okay, duplicate our layer. And the first thing we're going to do is just see if the He Spot Removal tool can do it in one go. Five quid says it won't. And I was right. It can't. Uh, so no, it can't. Um, you know, there's various things you could try and do. You could try and use the uh, the clone stamp tool, take a bit from over here, try and paint it in over here. But the problem is, is that the light changes so much from here to over here that at some point you're going to reach the middle and you're going to need it to have blended um, those tones together so that means you need to start going from this side and you kind of get the idea of how roughly you might go about doing it and it would honestly take me probably some time to do a convincing job even if I did it like this like it's looking like oh no you've got this don't worry at some point you're going to zoom out and have a look at it and go yeah that doesn't look right and it doesn't look right so I'm not even going to try it. I think let's just let's be happy with the fact that that lens flare is there. Um, David Galanti says this is what I was thinking. Um, I, 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 I'm on a delay from the chat from when you're seeing from when I've said it to when you see it. So like, um, I assume David means maybe I, either leaving the lens flare in because. Um, I've spoken to David before on the channel, and a set, he's a sensible person with good, with good views. Um, I wonder if maybe what we could do, though, is just try and... What I was saying about the lens flare, wanting a bit more down here, I could always try and fake that by going to Filter, and uh, we can go Render and uh, Lens Flare. Maybe we could add in another one. Uh, so we can put in the lens flare over here, we may even change the the type. Uh, oh no, something maybe that one actually looked okay. Put it over there. 
make it much less obvious and then we can uh you know what we need to undo that can i do a lens flare on an empty layer or will it not let me let's just do it again nope i can't uh so we duplicate the background and then we put the filter we put in the lens flare and we zoom out again uh yeah, I mean, there's two issues. One, this needs to be blurry, and I don't think I can blur it. What I would then do, though, get my uh, use a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Come on, vector. Uh, add a mask. A mask, of course. Working with masks. Um, fill that mask with white. Get a big old brush, just a regular brush, and I can paint away using black the bits that I don't want leaving me with just this bit so i like that more because i've got these there probably is a way of doing it maybe if i'd have actually edit fill this with black see if this will work not that uh new empty layer. oh i see new empty layer filter edit Fill with black. I'm totally experimenting, which I should not be doing on a stream, really. Um, then I can add in my lens flare. Then I can use my blending mode, and I can go to uh, darken. Where's darken gone? There it is. No, nope, lighten. Other way around. No. Screen. Thank you. One of them. Yeah, there we go. Because then it won't blend the black tones it will only blend the lighter ones maybe overlay you would have no screen it is screen there we go so now i can uh again get my uh brush and i can brush out this bit that i don't want and i can brush out that bit that i don't want and this bit i can go to filter blur gaussian blur and i can add in some blur to make it a more realistic lens flare with this click ok Bring my opacity down because it's a little bit too strong. It's just a hint. Just a hint that there's something wrong. But now it kind of matches with the lens flare that I do have. Um, let me know what you think. Intentionally adding in uh, flare just to balance out the real flare that I do have. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to save that um, because I don't really want to. But... There's an idea of, of kind of what you could go about um, doing in order in order to do that. Or if you did just want to add in some flair just for the sake of having some flair. There you go. That's that's one way of doing it. Um, back to the image, though. Um, I definitely want this to be quite a low contrast shot. So I don't want to go overboard on things like the whites and the blacks. I might bring the blacks down a little bit. Then I also might go to our tone curve. And just by grabbing this one down here, the absolute bottom, and bring it up, we can sort of bring, give that sort of filmic, film fade look, point curve. In fact, this is the one I needed to do, I think. Right at the bottom. Mm, I know that is literally just our shadows here. Okay, reset that. No, it would have been this one. And uh, we can put that here, put a point there, and then just bring up that and this. Um, I mean, it's doing a lot because a lot of this tone curve um, is where it's, it's coming from the uh, the preset we applied. Um, so that's kind of our before and after. Mostly, what we've done is sort of controlled some of the tones bring those back into our oranges and um, and, uh, and, a, and a richer blue in the sky, um, which has also helped sort of carve out some of the detail in the grasses here because we use the HSL uh, tool. And we've also really brought out more of a detail on the road, including using that radial filter on the road here just to brighten it up because it had fallen into shadow. Just blowing the candle out before my oil burner explodes which it has done uh, and I don't want to do it on a live stream 
Um, and we've also used some clarity in a filter in the sky just to help bring out some of the textures in the cloud. Um, I'm actually going to consider this shot done as far as I'm concerned because um, I really don't think that there would be anything more that I really want or can do to it. It is not a shot that I particularly loved. Um, it was just a, it was, they were nice conditions. It was one of those images that I just couldn't stand not taking a photo when it, everything looked so beautiful. So we pulled up literally just kind of on a, on a grass bank at the side um, of the road and I just stood in the road taking photos for a little while and um, this was apparently the best I could get. But I do think that the edits that we've made here have brought it together into a more compelling photo. It has narrowed our composition by using that wider crop. So we've just got this this cloud in here that hasn't been cut off and we've, we're focusing much more on the road sweeping away. Um, please do let me know what you think. Um, but for now, let's move on to a different one. Let's move on to this one. Um, this is one that I didn't do anything with at the time because I don't think it is a very good photo and I still don't think it is a very good photo. Um, it's fine. In a way, it's sort of compositionally accurate in that, you know, this is in, you know, it's, it follows a rule of thirds. Look at that. It's, it's almost bang on. Um, but there's no real main subject. These rocks are kind of the foreground, but they're not properly the foreground. I don't. I think this looks like I took it at maybe at my standing height. Um, maybe uh, maybe I was on my on my knees, but I feel like I could have got a little bit lower and just sort of reduced the of um, the amount of, of kind of ground you can see. But also, there's not a great subject in the background these rocks are quite a long way from the actual water and these cliffs so they're kind of small in the background so it isn't a shot that I, I particularly like but I thought it might be interesting to see whether we can make it any better and I'm going to keep this one fairly quick the other ones have taken me ages it's already 10 past 10 we're going for an hour and this is only my third photo and I do think that a one-to-one -one square crop is going to be the thing to use here because as you can see it's got rid of a lot of frankly dead space we've got a lot of empty sky yeah there's a little bit of cloud detail there's not a lot going on here and some of the rocks down here are fine but we don't need them these are the rocks we need and you know, this here and suddenly i think once we straighten it up so that our c is on a nice level um that's already I think a better looking shot we've brought we've brought that focus onto kind of the rocks um these ones here rather than it being this long one where we're kind of looking at everything but also nothing um so i just think this looks a lot better um let's uh have a look through some of our presets see if we want to use anything i'm not really sure that we do um so highlights down a lot of highlights going on as you can see at normal we've lost a lot of detail here and it's a very very plain sky so we bring it down pretty much all the way actually um our shadows we can stand to lift a little bit plus 20 ish um what about, is our white balance doing i think we can maybe warm it up ever so slightly and actually maybe bring our tint up I like it at plus five before and after already coming on I think quite nicely um, I'm going to use a graduated filter twice I'm going to bring one in on this sky and just try and um, make these clouds pop a little bit more extra bit of contrast extra bit of clarity um, and then I'm going to bring another one just to darken down this bottom here like I said before trying to draw the eye away from the the basically the parts that i don't want you to see and in this case it's just spare rocks some of which are being cut off by the frame um uh, you know they don't they're not part of this scene at all really so i'm going to bring this up something like that i think already it's doing a lot for our image um uh, i'm going to bring a brush in this time increase that exposure and just start painting it a little bit on this rock, helping it stand out. A little bit on this here, and a bit around there. 
something like that. Okay, now we're going to go to our HSL, have a little play around some of our colors. What are our greens up to? Very little in the way of greens. Yellows, a little bit. We don't want to go all the way down because everything's going to get orangey and pinky again. I just want to bring it down a little bit. Take it from a greeny yellow to a more sort of a vivid yellowy yellow. We haven't gone very far. Minus 18. And the oranges, I don't think I'm going to do much with at all. Just about there. Um, I'm going to see what they do luminance-wise. In fact, I am going to bring them up a little bit because it brings out a bit more detail here, a bit more detail in the rocks, which I like. And the yellows, I think I'm going to do about the same again. So that's looking okay. Um, our blues, however, I am going to bring down because that's giving us a bit more of a richer blue tone in the sky and a little bit more detail uh, in the flowing water. So I'm going to bring it down to minus 20. Saturation. Let's up those oranges a touch. Bring down the yellows a little bit. This is just down to preference, but bringing the orange up keeps these tones in the rock here, but bringing the yellows kind of takes off the warm color cast on the on this rock, which I kind of like. But we're not losing any deep, we're not losing any color in the rocks up here because that's mostly in the orange channel. Off and on. It's small, but you know, that's kind of where we're going. And maybe a little bit of color grading. Maybe a little bit of blues in their shadows. A little bit of warmth, extra warmth in those highlights. Turn that off and on. You can turn tools on and off independently in Lightroom rather than just looking at the whole before and after. And you should do because that lets you really decide if what you've just done is worth doing. In this case, I think, yes, I like what it's done. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything more that I, I want to do to this shot. There's just been a few quick edits um, of kind of what I would do to try and turn this into, you know, if I needed to squeeze a shot out of this. Frankly, you know, this shot will sit in my library. I'll never do anything with it. I'm not going to post it to Instagram. Um, it's certainly not going to be in my um, uh, in my portfolio. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to uh, create a virtual copy. But if I um, uh, reset everything back to zero, that's kind of what we started with. And that's what we've done. I think... I think it has it's helped narrow the the composition it's helped make these rocks be more of an actual interest in the scene that I think fits kind of with everything else whereas this is a little bit too much going on obviously you can go back and you can recrop I'm actually kind of thinking that maybe something more like a four by five kind of like this might be a little bit better actually rather than the tight square anyway there you go a few tips these are things that you can try if you've come away from somewhere and somewhere that you really enjoyed being and enjoyed taking photos and you've come home and maybe your photos that you've you've come back with you kind of feel they're a little bit lackluster they didn't quite have the same uh impact that you that you kind of hoped they were these are just a few tools that you can maybe you can try and, and see where you get to. I'm going to jump ahead. Jump ahead to this guy. To Mark underneath this sort of water outlet. And again, this is another one I'm going to try and do quickly. It's dark again. So we're going to need to bring up the exposure overall quite a bit. And I'm going to bring up the shadows a, a, a certain amount as well. Um, I definitely want to change the crop. But I don't think I want to go one to one. I think four by five, just kind of bringing it in a bit, top and bottom, is going to be good. Um, I want this as my foreground. This the way that the water kind of snakes through, um, through this bit. Um, uh, like this, I think looks pretty good. Um, so there, so that's what we've got there. Okay. Uh, temp 
increase the temp, increase our tint. Quickly before and after, before and after, before and after. Okay, we're looking good. Um, next I'm gonna do using more selective tools. We need to work specifically on Mark and his face. So we're gonna paint that mask in here. We're gonna paint it in on his body a little bit like this. You can see just how rough and ready this mask is that I'm using. It's gonna be going onto the sky um, as you can see, but what we can do now, uh, Lightroom has a great tool for really refining the masks that you use. And um, let's turn auto mask off. Actually, I don't think there is lots on the sky because I've used auto mask. However, you can use something called range mask. And if you click it to luminance, that means you can basically tell Lightroom that you don't want your mask to appear in either very bright parts or very dark parts. In this instance, the sky is much brighter than Mark himself. And so we can very easily say, if we show luminance mask, and let's just say, let's actually paint some more in for the sake of showing you how this, this works. There you go. I've accidentally gone over and drawn on the sky. Now, we can see if I drag this one, this the, bright, the upper one is the bright one, and start to drag it away, you can see that it's taken away that mask from the bright part because it's recognizing that as bright and being, okay, I'm not going to apply it. So it has refined our mask and we've had to do very little. Um, it, is it is refining and taking it away from kind of a lot of the rest of him. So we can't go too far with it, but it's just enough to kind of take off that, that main edge, maybe a little bit less. Something around there, it's basically disappeared, but we've still got um, more going on in his face. And in fact, if we increase our brush, we can paint in a bit more knowing that that it isn't going to apply on the sky because of the uh, the luminance mask that we've drawn. So we can uncheck that. There he is trying to look noble and we are increasing our exposure and maybe a little bit of those shadows. In fact, no, let's see the shadows where they are because we want a little bit of contrast on his face. And now we go back. So now he stands out from the scene a little bit more, but we haven't had to go into Photoshop and, and cut him out and do all these complicated things. It's just using these really basic tools which are already available in Lightroom, and it's made a huge difference. Let's have a look at some color toning presets. I kind of like A6. Yeah, A6 looked good. I mean, no, it doesn't really work as a black and white at all, does it? Mm, okay, let's have a look at that. Um, it's done a few things I don't like. I'm going to reduce the contrast a bit. It's gone very contrasty. So, first up, let's go to our HSL tab and let's put back in some of the orange because it's taken quite a bit of it out and most of uh, Mark's skin tone lies in the orange. So, we don't want to take that out too much. Same goes for the red. In fact, is the red in his skin tone? Yes, quite a bit. What we can do, instead of him making look like he's been eating a lot of beetroot, we can leave it at, um, we can up the saturation slightly, but go to the hue and change it from being a pink red into more of an orangey tone. Not all the way, because then he looks sick, um, but just a little bit to kind of take the edge off that sort of redness. Make it look a little bit more natural, something like that. We could even increase that luminance to help brighten up his face even more. So I think that looks pretty decent. In fact, maybe that's a bit too much. Let's bring it back down. Oh yeah, actually darkening it, not that much. That's silly, but just a little bit. Yeah, something around there looks decent. On and off, on and off. Fine. Our blues, uh, we can bring down to that extent. Let's also desaturate ever so slightly. Or maybe not. Around there, that's fine. Uh, our hues, what about our greens? What are our greens doing? Not a lot, but our yellows are. But I quite like them being quite a greeny, a greeny yellow. Again, you know, adjust to taste. This is entirely based on, on your own personal preferences. This is just some of the uh, things I would do. 
And I would bring the yellows down because it was quite bright on here. So this is another good way of kind of editing landscapes in the, is that depending on what is in your landscape, they may well be in completely different color channels in that, you know, this bank of what looks like maybe, I don't know, something. It's a completely different color to the grass in the foreground. So it allows you to very easily edit those tones separately because they are in different color channels. Very handy. Always have a always have a look. Boost those a bit. Have we got much in the way of aquas? Not loads. Purples. A little bit of purple on mark actually. Don't mind bringing those up. Same with magenta as well as the looks of it. Just want to go in and check. It's not doing anything weird to his face. The purple is actually very much uh, giving us a nice highlight. On the side of his face if we bring that down you can see that it's sort of gone a bit grungy on the side <laughs> mark grungy it's funny because his name is mark grundy but of course people watching this don't know that except mark um so yeah let's bring that purple up it emphasizes that it's a bit more of a, of a, of a highlight hitting his face which i think looks actually really nice um this is not really a landscape photo is it I mean, it's sort of him in a landscape. I actually think maybe a uh, a square crop is better for this. You know what? It's. I think I've done all I really need to on this shot. I don't think there's loads more that really can be that can be done. You know, I've taken it from that. It, it's it's fine. I think it's sort of uh, is what it is. I just thought it would be good to kind of show some techniques if you were maybe taking photos of people in there, how you can uh, sort of independently um, make sure that you're editing the landscape without uh, dramatically affecting like, their skin tone so they don't look um, a completely inhuman colour. Um, instead, still coming out with um, you know proper tones and everything. Okay, um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to this. And I'm probably going to make this for the last one because I just really don't like that shot at all. Um, straight away, we need to bring that exposure up. It's super dark, you know, straight out of camera. It was like this. This was a eight-second shot at f the th f13. Um, but yeah, we need to do a lot of a lot of work on this. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring those. Uh, highlight's not going to touch the whites I'm going to increase because again that's going to help increase our contrast a little bit but I'm not going to increase the contrast because I don't want things to fall too much into darkness but what I do think with this shot it needs two things one it needs a crop something like a 4x5 again because looking at our composition we've got spare sky where there's not a lot going on, but there's lots going on in the foreground. I love these rocks. I love the detail we've got from the seaweed. It's a very foreground-heavy shot that leads us towards this ruined old boathouse, which we which we found um, right on the northern uh, tip of Scotland. So for me, this shot requires um, a, a, a considerate crop where we're really making sure to kind of keep our eye on these elements where we're not cutting in to these rocks in order to try and focus too much we could maybe try and cut in cut out this one just to make the the house even bigger in the frame but personally i don't think it needs it i think we can do a crop like this where we've got this one in here and this um it's uh sort of rule of thirds um uh, obeying to the rule of thirds if you think it needs to in the bottom of the house is almost there and and this line is cutting across kind of above this rock so you know it's fitting quite nicely compositionally and i just think that is actually quite a good composition for this scene the other thing that i want to do with this shot is go black and white because this shot is all about the textures and the different items in it and the colors actually i don't think look all that compelling so I'm going to have a look through, but I'm not just going to click black and white because I want to use maybe like a good black and white preset, which is going to 
sort of help bring in some nice mood and drama. Something like that. B5 half. I actually think that's kind of cool because it looks so moody. So here's how I would then, you know, you start off, but then what I would want to do is lean quite heavily on my adjustment brush because I'd want to then bring in some more detail because, it, again, it's very dark, but I don't want to just increase the contrast. I don't want to just increase the exposure, but I want to go in and I want to paint in the light just where we want it and this can be a time consuming process particularly if you want it to look really good but before and after I'm going to move it down you know what I think if I uh, turn this brush off zoom out a little bit and then we can go back in using the same tool and keep on brushing in those highlights. Not on everything. What I kind of want to do is I'm not just trying to make some rocks brighter, but where there already are highlights, bits of where the light is catching over this bit of the rock here, but not at the top bit, I want to just increase it a little bit. A little bit there. It's just helping carve out those details. We can probably increase it by upping our flow and maybe up in the exposure just a little bit. So the idea is that we're bringing out the details very selectively without just increasing our global exposure and contrast, particularly on things like this old iron, like the railings for the boat. We want that to come out even more. But on here, on these, I want the details to pop. And we can do a whole bit on this bit of seaweed just to make sure that pops out a bit more. See what I mean? It's not about adding light where there isn't light. It's about emphasizing where there already is that light. So in areas of dark shadow, I'm not trying to bring that up. And I'm not doing it everywhere. I'm going to do a little bit on the on the boathouse. I might leave that for a separate one, actually. So I'm going to leave that for now. Zoom back out. Let's turn this tool off and on. Look how much difference that's made. How much has brought out these rocks. Huge amount of difference. Huge. And we're going to do a little bit more. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, though, is bring in a uh, graduated filter. A lower exposure. And I'm going to bring that down over our house a little bit. Something like this. Make it darker, make it darker. Because I want this to be real moody. Increase the clarity to bring out some of those details in that sky. And the contrast to touch. But I am also then going to see if our luminance mask is going to help us stop it appearing too much. Actually, it really isn't appearing on the, uh, on the boathouse all that much at all. So actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. Um, yeah, this is a dark, moody edit. But we can do a bit more still. First of all, I do want to add some uh, clarity to this scene, but I don't want to add it yet. I want to play around with the others first. Now we've gone black and white. I'm going back to our whites. I'm increasing that. That is also increasing some of the contrast. So before you add things like clarity or contrast, try playing with those first. Um, crucially, what I don't want to do is add clarity to everything. Because if I do things, you, there's too much detail that it's very difficult to kind of work out where to look because everything in this scene is suddenly crispy and, and obvious. Um, so instead, 
we're going to add it just with the brush again. Reset the effect. Um, more clarity, and I'm going to paint a bit in on this rock. A bit in on this rock. Um, maybe a little bit here, a little bit around there. And then I'm going to go in and paint quite a bit on, um, we'll just turn our mask on, on here, because this is going to help just bring out some contrast in the building, bring out some of the details in that wood. Turn our mask off, clarity up and down. See, look how much difference that's making. It's really popping out from the scene. That wood grain becomes a lot more um, sort of gnarled and, and weather-worn. I really, really like how that looks with some with some clarity on it, and it stands out in the scene um, even more. But we haven't just applied clarity to everything, making it look, as we saw, far too gritty. It's instead focused where we want it to be. Uh, which very much is on that uh, on the boathouse. Um, I want to bring in another brush, this time darkening quite a bit, and I want to bring it in at these sides because there's quite a lot of brightness here, and I and I really want this to be even darker. And these sort of big sea walls do not need to be seen. They don't need to be kind of part of our of our image. We can even try and darken down the sky a little bit more something like this basically what we're doing is creating a vignette but we're doing it manually we're doing it we're painting it in ourselves which means we have a lot more control over where it is if we just go down and use the vignette tool it just goes uniformly around the whole image but i don't want it applying everywhere at the exact same strength i want it stronger in some areas like around here less so around here less so around these parts of this of the sky so by doing it myself with a with a brush, it just gives that level of control. Um, I want to paint in a little bit around here, a little bit there, because there's a lot of kind of spare rock, which the rocks are interesting here, not so much here. So we've kind of brightened up here, ever so slightly darkened there. Um, and again, if we just turn our brush off and on, most of like the creative side of this editing in this black and white image now is being done with brushes just by painting in light and shadow we've not done anything else with color we've stripped color out from from step one. Ah, oh, this looks like a face look at that hello all right sorry it's late it's half ten, and I think I'm just going a little bit peculiar. Anyway, actually, without the things, it still looks like a face. Two eyes, nose, and a mouth. No? Just me? All right, carrying on. Um, okay, uh, I do want to do a little bit of extra um, dodging and burning on the building. I want to use a darker one just on this inside panel. I want this... This door is, is fallen inwards into shadow so i want it to be properly in shadow i want you to look at this building see that door and go i i just want to kind of look in i want to know what's there like it's all in darkness i don't want it to seem like oh actually you know there's probably plenty of light in there so i want to darken this panel down even more make it look even more foreboding um could we sound to go darker no at a certain point it gets a bit obvious something like that we're going to get a new brush this one's going to be a bit lighter and a bit more on the whites we're going to brush that in around some but not all of these wood panels we're just sort of roughly going to brush it in oops did i just move it show selected mask yes i did Sometimes you can accidentally grab the mask itself and move it where that I want it. About there, wasn't it? That looks about right. Okay, let's again, we can turn off and on. Look how much difference. When you look at it zoomed in like this and you quickly flick it on and off, it looks quite obvious. But when you take a, a step back, it is still obvious. In fact, I actually think I have gone a little bit OTT, but you get the idea. You can really bring out details and sculpt the scene exactly as you want to 
by using these selective tools. It doesn't need to just be a case of clicking black and white and then just playing with, uh, you know, the... I haven't even touched highlights and shadows hardly. I haven't touched blacks in this. Everything that I've done in this pretty much has been done with the brushes. And if I start bringing things up now, you know, suddenly with more shadows coming out, it looks a little bit, I think, a bit HDR-y. Like there's too many details that you don't really know where to look. So by keeping shadows in and just lightening up the areas you want, it you you are instructing people where to look in your image. That is how you use light in a scene, is to direct people where to look. And in this case, I want people to be looking at these big rocks here, and I want them to be looking up towards the uh, the hut. So that's kind of... That's kind of it. Shall we do one more? What time are we on? Half ten. I've um, been going for an hour. All right, fine. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the boat. I'm going to make it pretty quick though, because it is getting late, and I um, I didn't want to make this one two hours. I was going to do this for about an hour, but we've already gone late. Uh, straight away, we're um, just neating it up because it's on a slant. It's still on a slant. I think that's about fine. Um, and in fact, actually, while we've got that crop tool open, I think I want to bring this to maybe something like a, not a five by seven, maybe a four three, no, four three is what it was, 16, nine, maybe, maybe a little bit wider. No, not 16, nine. Let's go, um, what was the, what was it originally? What is that aspect ratio? Is that 4.3? It was 4.3. Um, 5.7. It makes very little difference. 2 by 3. 2 by 3. There we go. That's the happy medium I was looking for. Because there is nice foreground. We've got this nice reflection, but we've also got nice cloud detail. So there's no reason for me to really want to go in too narrow with a wide cinematic crop. I, I do like a 16-9 crop. It's probably the aspect ratio I use most, um, often with landscapes, because I like that sort of panoramic feel that you get. That's what we did with this shot. In fact, this was uh, two by four to make it wide, to emphasize that sense of like this cinematic scape sprawling out in front of you. Um, but I don't think it's always necessary. I think it's important to really think about the composition that you want and what is in your frame when you decide on what aspect ratio um, to go for. So I think um, that this is, for me, the right one. Um, we're going quick, so I'm going to have a look through some, uh, some nice sort of color toning presets. Um, I don't really love any of them straight off the bat so let's not use them uh we're going to increase our exposure because it is quite dark but bring back those highlights because there's um, a lot of highlight detail in the sky um, i'm going to bring in a uh, graduated filter down here to darken the bottom but i'm not going to do a lot i'm going to use a brush to brighten it back up. Basically the, the um, same tools I used on the house before. A bit of exposure, a bit of whites, and a bit of clarity. And I'm gonna paint that in specifically and gently over the reflection of the boat because I don't wanna darken that. I want that reflection to be emphasized. With clarity in water like this, you really get, in fact, I'm not just doing it on the boat, I'm also doing it on where um, the water is uh, sort of flowing across the bits of sand, so it's not all being darkened. Um, it's just just some of it has, but I particularly want it on there because that clarity and those whites are really going to help carve that reflection out even more. We can bring that up. Play around with that clarity, maybe a little bit less, just around 10 on the clarity. Maybe even more highlights. And a bit more exposure. So we've actually brought it up quite a lot. If we're going to turn that off and back on. It's a dramatic change. But 
if you didn't know I'd done it, you might not necessarily be able to tell, but it does make a big difference. Really, now you've got that that reflection there. I moved around this scene when I was taking this shot, crucially to find a, a, a patch of water because everything kind of below this bit of water, um, the sand is just sand. Um, there wasn't loads of water because the tide had been out so much. So I wanted to find um, a, an angle where there is a big enough patch of water to get that reflection i really wanted kind of that mirror thing going on so i moved around and i found this so i want to make sure that i'm emphasizing that reflection as much as i can and i think that has done so uh let's put in a filter on our sky and see how we can go about bringing out some of those details i'm not going to touch the exposure but i'm going to up the contrast a little bit and let's up the clarity because again look at that because it's feathered off quite a lot, it's not affecting our hills down here and it's not affecting the boat. It's just affecting the sky and really carving out those cloud details, which I love. Something around there. And I'm just going to take the edge off those highlights. And just in case it is, in fact, it looks like it is slightly giving a bit of a halo effect. And here you see how it's kind of darkening around the outsides of this this bit that's the clarity doing that look at that as i move it up and down you can just see that there's this sort of dark halo appearing around that stem well hopefully if we use our range mask tool our luminance mask we can see where it's been applying this time we don't want it to apply in the very dark areas which is this bit so we can take that up and as we do you can see that the red disappears from that. And if we uncheck that now, it's not gone, but it's lessened it by quite a bit. It's still there as we move it up and down, but it's not quite as pronounced. So when we look at it at the, the at full screen, I don't think you can really tell. In fact, I could maybe stand to move it up and just feather it a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Um, if I was super bothered, which let's pretend that I am. Because there's not a lot of cloud detail around here anyway, what I can do is probably loads the br uh, loads the filter again, go to a brush tool, go to the erase tool, and using a low flow on the erase and a, and a larger brush that's feathered out quite a lot, I can probably just paint that away. If we show our mask... You know, paint around it so it's not obvious that there's just a gap missing. But then it's gone, and it hasn't. We haven't got any issues with it, sort of causing that uh, sort of bleed um, from the from the mast. But also now we have got our filter in place on the sky, so we've got the best of both worlds. So that's kind of cool. Um, we haven't done anything to our white balance so let's play with that uh, which way do we want to go we could actually go colder which i think gives quite a moody look to this shot which i'm kind of digging particularly if we up those uh up our tints a little bit we get a very nice sort of morning look i mean i think if we went warmer in our temperature and more with our tint, we get sunset. Whereas if we went a bit less and cooler, we get sunrise. Hmm, which do I prefer? Maybe sunset, maybe this. Oh yeah, lovely like deep magenta tones. But there's other ways that we can add that. I do kind of like this. Let me know what you think as I'm going. Um, going to up our whites a little bit just going to help increase that contrast uh shadows i haven't touched and i don't think i'm going to i kind of like them where they are um, anything else you know we don't touch our texture clarity and dehaze pretty much in landscapes i use them selectively to do things like increase increase that i mean dehaze here might not be terrible mm, makes things look very quickly things get very contrasty i don't mind a little bit here plus four just a very very small amount just a hint 
of dehaze before and after always check your before and after a lot of the color edits in this has come so far just from our white balance from changing that tint it's completely transforming the look of this shot when did i take this 10 past 2 in the afternoon in midwinter right on the highlands so this is very much sunset i think the sun was our usable light was pretty much gone by about 3 30 um in terms of um it being a a good shoot it was very very challenging because we had such a very narrow uh window each day in which we could actually shoot so yeah but i like that let's keep on going let's keep on going into our hsl and um, we can drag our yellows up and down up and down there's almost no yellows to speak of oranges up and down up and down okay oranges there's a little bit in the sand here and i like that we can bring that down because right now it is a yellowy weak source sort of orange i don't want to take it very far as soon as we start going too far it, again it gets pink i don't want a pink tone I just want a little bit more of a rich orange. That's all we've done. It's very subtle, but it does make a bit of a difference. I'm also going to see if we can bring up the luminance just a touch. Let's go back into our hue. Uh, purples. We have now got more purples because of the um, magenta we added into that sky. We could push that further. We could push it much more into a... Um, into a magenta -y tone, and indeed we should do, because actually... It's not really much magenta going on. Uh, we can also grab that purple and we can make it darker, which is good because that's also helping control some of our highlights in the sky. And so now we've got much more vivid purples and blues going on in our sky, which looks great. Let's drag that blue down a little bit. Um, we can even increase the saturation of our purples. Not loads, because it starts to go a bit OTT. Plus 20. I like this shot being quite vibrant. It's quite big. Um, the previous edit I did was was anything but. It was it was a bit more subdued, I think. But um, it is nice to be able to load up these shots and and kind of have another go. And and each time you you do this, you know, there's no limits of the edits you can do. I, I really enjoy going back to older shots. You know, this is one from 2018. I like going back and, and doing fresh edits, particularly if you've not done it in a while. You've probably learned new techniques, certainly if you're watching my videos. Um, and uh, there's, there's new tools. Like some of the tools I'm using in here, uh, like the color grading tool was only added at the end of last year. So like this is these are new features that you wouldn't have had when you first edited your shots. So it's really important, I think, to revisit some shots and see if you can uh, do something new with them. Particularly at the moment when we can't go out and take new photos. So it is um, it is nice to be able to kind of sit here and do something um do something at all photography related um i'm loading the brush tool increasing the exposure and i'm going to start painting that in on the boat i want to bring the boat out a little bit more something like this maybe even a bit more up those whites maybe actually up the clarity a little bit too And actually, let's bring those shadows back. I just wanted to stand out a bit more. What do we think? What do we think of this shot? Put your thoughts in the comments as I'm editing. What would you do differently? What would you like to see differently in this shot? Is there anything that's taking away from, uh, from it for you? Um, we can keep playing around with our white balance, but now we've kind of changed our color tones. It is a bit more difficult to to go back and then adjust these in quite the same way. Um, I think this tone is more akin to uh, to what I had in my in my previous shot, and I think it was maybe I brought my vibrance down 
and then raise my exposure so it was a bit more mono a bit more bleak so it is nice as i say to try something different and i think this looks quite nice um the last thing i'll do on this i think is i'm going to just do a bit of color grading and again i'm going to try adding in some cooler tones into the shadows but not necessarily blue I'm going to try adding in some more of the magentas because we have put magenta in the tint so having more magenta in the shadows makes sense um, you know if we start to slide it round to the to the blues and cyans then we lose that shift it goes cooler already um, so I think that looks quite nice and then we can maybe add some warmth uh, into the highlights as well something like this maybe a bit less and we can turn that tool off and back on and I do think that has made quite a bit of difference I like that it has brought in some more magenta in I think it's emphasized that sunset feel yeah i mean i'm I'm pretty happy with that there's not loads more that i think i would do um it is important to kind of take a take a step back and have a look certainly if you're not totally sure um uh if you're not if you're not completely sure about about an image then you know take a moment to kind of look away um, or even take a day if you if you're not push to a to a deadline if you've been staring at basically the same image certainly if you've been going through the whole batch of a photo shoot if i go and have a look at um, all of these porsche scotland edits in total in this catalog there's 660 images and some of them are kind of like the same versions um you know or ones where i've tried to move around this is kind of what i was saying about finding the right composition with the reflection because there's, there's not loads of reflection to be had so i had to find the right bit so if you've been going through these whole lot at a certain point you just get exhausted and just go "Ugh, really like you need to be able to keep things fresh and be able to go okay i know what it is i'm trying to achieve here um and sometimes just kind of stepping away for a couple of hours doing something else and then coming back to it is the thing to do uh where was i back in my develop module i'm going to actually take this i'm going to bring it darker again because in fact i'm going to bring it quite a lot darker because we put in that brush that's brightening up some of this water what i'm basically trying to do is darken the rest of it which is going to firstly draw the eye as before more towards the boat but i think if i go in and up these it's giving that bit more contrast between the where the the water is catching the light and where the sand where it isn't this bit is a little bit ott so ott means over the top just in case that is a very british way of saying things i don't know if it is uh so i'm just going to with a low flow steadily just paint away some of that effect still a bit much something like that can increase the saturation on it slightly just to make that red pop okay yeah i think that looks pretty nice actually as as that goes um i don't think there's anything else i want to do i don't I'm going to experiment with putting a little bit more in these um, in these sort of water flows down here, but again, I don't want them to be too distracting. So I think maybe just a bit of up in that clarity, maybe less exposure and more highlights. So I ramp up the highlights, bring the exposure back down, maybe a bit of whites. Yeah, that blends a little bit better. I want it to look as natural as possible. 
I think that is a, looks a bit more authentic. It looks like they are actually those those water ripples, uh, sort of all the way down here and here, are actually reflecting the light. So again, it is subtle. It's small little changes. It's it's lots of different brushes. How many brushes have we used on this one so far? Three. Um, you know, plus the uh, plus multiple filters, and so we could even try. Uh, popping in a whole radial filter on the boat uh, like this it's going to go everywhere like that so there's two things we can do one make it quite big so that we can just increase the exposure just where the boat is but because it's quite a big filter it isn't going on everything but we can then uh, use our range mask luminance and just stop it from applying um, on the sky quite so much so we do that bring it down there it's now applying pretty much just on the boat um, and again I just think that helps it pop out of the scene I know we did that with a brush but I just think that does it even even more before and after I think that's done. I honestly do. Um, in the comments, David Galanti says, maybe the aspect ratio. I don't know why, uh, but 4, 2 comes to my mind. Um, we can have another look at 4-2. Um, 4-2 at four, two. Four, two is, um, or 2-4, or is, is very uh, panoramic. And I, and I did like a you know, panoramic shot on this, and we did look at 16-9. At um, to me, it's just a little bit, too close um, on the boat it's cutting off some of this reflection it's also losing we've got lovely cloud detail in this sky and that's all part of a scene that I don't want to lose um, I also like kind of showing that the boat is basically by itself in this little bay with all this other stuff around it so I don't want to crop too close so for me um, Four three, you know what? What was it before? Let's go. Let's go back to this. I think is that where we were? Something like that. Or had I moved it down? Was it supposed to be like that? Something like that. About about there. Um, this uh, is, I think, how I want it. How I want it to look because when this way we're not cutting off the reflection of the boat that's all there we've got a little bit of like these last details as well as some of these um, reflections in the water but we've still got also all this lovely cloud the different wisp different colors there's so much of that sky which really adds to the scene so for me this is about kind of looking at what elements are in the picture that you want to actually keep what is surplus that you can get rid of in this case i don't think this sky is surplus because there's lots going on if this was a really bright day where it was just empty blue sky then absolutely i'd want to kind of crop away from that so that it's um uh, we don't have just empty sky but this isn't we have got those nice details i want to keep them in um, same goes i think on on this one another edit i did um of the porsche um something's happened this is not rendering properly this looks very weird um there's a lot of cloud detail going on with all these like nice wispy bits so i don't want to crop in away from that and similarly i want to make sure i'm keeping all of these rocks uh down here in this foreground so it is just about when you first take your image you will see what these elements are that's what's kind of there um, and you'll you know arrange your shot arrange it so that you know what it is that you're taking the photo of but then at the cropping point you can refine that you can take it a little bit further and maybe even find a different way of kind of representing uh, what it is that you want to do um, uh, wrong one all these different streams epic landscapes there we go this one was my first example in that the original crop had a lot of this sky, and yes, there was some cloud detail, but the point we, we still keep the essence of that cloud detail here with these moody clouds coming in here. Um, but it the point this is a wide scene because of the way the bridge sweeps across the landscape. So having this quite panoramic aspect ratio works really well here in a way that I just don't think it does quite here. But that is very much down to taste. Some people would love that david you may still look at this and be like no 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 
for me, it has to be an, a, a wider um, aspect ratio. Um, but uh, to my eye, this is this is how I would want this image to look. But I think this this is going to bring me uh, to an end because it's getting on for. In fact, it is. It's eleven o'clock. I've been going for two hours. That is definitely time enough. Um, let's have another quick look through the shots that we've got. Um, this was our first one. This is what we started with. Um, very, very dark, very, very blue. We brought it uh, to this by mostly using selective edits and by using using the HSL uh, tools, the hue, saturation, and luminance. We did much the same on this one. We brought the crop in. We made some edits on, on the road to um, eliminate some of the shadows here and bring the color palette a little bit more in line with what it was supposed to be, a warm, excuse me, a warm sunset. Our blues before were a little bit purpley and um, we didn't have much detail going on here. So this is what we did. As a result, I think we've got a lovely looking scene. Uh, we did this shot where we brought in our crop. I tried to uh, make a <laughs> tried to make a, a photo out of this uh, frankly poor snap. Um, and this is kind of what I took it to, which I don't think was very good. Uh, the boat one we've just done. We did a few edits on on poor Mark here, um, and we did our black and white um, house using a lot of dodging and burning to bring up some detail on these rocks. All of which brings me to an end um thank you so much if you have watched this entire two-hour stream thank you very much normally when i do these sorts of lightroom tips they are edited down to 15 minutes because you don't need to see all of my rambling and waffling and everything else um but hopefully it's been enjoyable just to kind of sit and and watch and hopefully it's been kind of chilled um just to maybe have on the background um and see how i go about doing these sorts of edits um i would love to hear some feedback on kind of what people did enjoy with these streams what people would like to see more of if there are certain types of photography that you would like to see me do more with um usually in these streams i do landscapes but if you'd like to see more like post-production on my automotive shoots or maybe some of my product shoots um might be a bit more difficult because some of those take 10 hours or more per photo so that'd be a very long stream um yeah please do let me know if you've got any other ideas uh things that you would like to see or if you've just got any questions uh do please make sure to hit me up in the comments um if you have enjoyed this stream hit the like button and definitely if you are new to my channel please do consider subscribing if you're interested in photography i've got a lot of stuff coming up um both from home and in like a local area so lots of kind of photography tips and tricks to help get you out shooting doing things in a safe and responsible way given that we can't go out traveling and go into all the cool places we actually want to go but you know keeping it keeping it safe keeping it real folks uh thank you so much for joining it's 11 o'clock i'm going to go to bed have a lovely rest of your day and i will see you all 